It's fair to say that the relationship between the United States and Russia is tense at best. Throughout their history, the two countries have been both allies and enemies. During the Cold War, the US and the Soviet Union were locked in an intense battle that very nearly culminated in nuclear war. Thankfully, it didn't, and in 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed, ending the Cold War. It's been more than two decades since the Soviet era ended. Russia and its people have moved on, well, except for towns like this. Zarechny, its former name was Penza 19, is one of the 44 last remaining closed cities left in Russia. Under communism, it was not even shown on the map, and freedom of movement was heavily restricted. That's Ksenia Yurkova, a Russian photographer who visited Zarechny, a closed city southeast of Moscow. Now, you're probably wondering what a closed city is. Throughout the Cold War, the Soviet Union created 44 cities that were kept secret from the world. These cities were dedicated to making weaponry, specifically nuclear bombs. The USSR was trying to play catch up because in 1945, this happened. The bomb was exploded above the city and in the towering mushroom, Japan could read its doom. The American detonations in Hiroshima and Nagasaki kickstarted an arms race between the US and Soviets that would last for decades. But the USSR didn't want anyone knowing where they were building their bombs, so they created cities that were, at the time, impossible to find. Secret cities like Zarechny existed to make weapons without interruption or interference. But now, long after the Cold War has ended, many of these cities remain isolated. Not just from the rest of the world, but from the rest of the country too. The city's uh, 62,000 inhabitants live encircled by a fence of barbed wire. They easily can leave the city, but the guests are allowed to visit only after they obtain the invitation from the locals, and only if it is approved by the authorities. The city is beginning to open up, but there are still parts of it that are completely blocked off from outsiders like Ksenia. Today's Arechny is still full of out-of-bounds areas, most notably Rosatom, a state-owned corporation to manufacture parts for nuclear weapons. Most of inhabitants work on the main plant and on some others connected to an industry. Although work here doesn't pay very well, the work is steady, food is cheap, and although there's not much else to do, the local government does provide some social programs to keep the community happy. Some commentators have even described Zarechny as a kind of socialist wonderland, a relic of the Soviet era. Even so, in recent years, some youth in the city have expressed their desire to leave, or at the very least to have more freedom. When Ksenia visited the city, it was clear that residents were still subject to the local government. People seem to be not so free in their decisions. It was rather visible during the official parade due to anniversary celebration when the most of workers were forced to take part. In a lot of ways, living in Zarechny really is like living in a time capsule of Soviet life. The people here face restrictions on their movements, on their work, and even on how they socialize. But maybe residing in this bubble, away from the problems of the wider world, does mean that life is somewhat easier, if a little dull. The main Russian political agenda transmitted by mass media is absolutely imperceptible here. There is no attention to the problems of immigrants, external state policy, minorities, gay prides, and so forth. The daily routine doesn't assume any fluctuations. Life is safe, measured, and tranquil, even sleepy, the inheritance of the previous Soviet era. The Soviet era was a tumultuous time outside of Russia as well. Our latest video takes a look at the long road to independence for the Czech Republic. Check that out now. You can imagine how transfixed I was by the news when I started to hear about demonstrations against the communist regime in the fall of 1989. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.